Sometimes we meet with prospects and we, we feel that we got information, but when it's all said and done, we didn't get much at all because we didn't listen well enough. On today's episode, we're going to talk to you about how you can listen for what the prospect's not saying and how this can really help you to increase your sales and pipeline. You're going to love it. Hey, 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 everyone. Welcome to another great episode of the Sales Evangelist Podcast. I'm your host, Donald C. Kelly, the Sales Evangelist. And I'm so excited for another great episode. I'm so excited to be here with you today. And on this episode today, I have an amazing guest. His name is Zachary Bradshaw. You can call him Zach. He and I connected on LinkedIn and was a poll that I had where we were talking about what are some of the ways that the skills that are most important for B2B sales professionals. One of them that came back was listening. But Zachary and I went deeper into our conversation. And one of the things we both agreed on was oftentimes there are things that the sales prep is not listening for. And today we're going to talk about some of those things, how he helps his team with that and some ideas that can help you. If this is your first time listening to our podcast, please subscribe. We're going to notify you every time we have a new episode just like this one. We dive into this episode, you get a chance to learn a little bit about Zach and about what he's doing, but also how he went about doing this with his team and how he's working with them on a day-to-day basis and how he's using collective, uh, let's just say collective intelligence of the community to be able to help with making sure that we're hearing the right things. It's an amazing topic, a wonderful discussion. I know you're going to love it. Zach, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Tom. Glad to be here. I'm really looking forward to this discussion um, because when we were talking in pre the pre-show, like prepping for this, <laughs> I felt like you were watching me as a kid, uh, as a new seller, <laughs> and you're describing all the mistakes that I made <laughs> because I can relate so much to it, and I know many of us can relate to this as well. I bragged about you a little bit in the teaser, but why don't you just tell us about your role and what you do and why you are so qualified to talk about this topic, especially why I think so. But tell us a little bit more about your role and what you do yeah. right now. Yeah, perfect. So um, I put a Vice President of Business Development at BrightKey, and BrightKey is a organization that provides managed services. So basically, If your company does not specialize in specific steps within your business process, you outsource it to our team so you can stay focused on your core operations, right? Um, You know, what makes me experience this? A lot of failures, just like you. It's it's a rough road getting here, right? It's been, you know, I don't know how many doors slammed in my face uh, going in with just cocky attitudes, thinking that I'm going to push whatever I can on these um, buyers and just to learn that uh, ultimately I wasn't listening to them. And um, you know that comes with maturity, but a lot of doors shut in my face along the way. Yeah, and I, I think what you mentioned comes with maturity, that experience is sometimes just the ability to be able to capture information that is not said or being able to n- listen for what should be said that hasn't been said yet. Um, and I and I think that comes with that experience. Why I feel this conversation is so go- uh, great. You had commented on a post that I had on LinkedIn, and it was a poll that I was doing about what is the most important sales skills, and the overwhelmingly came back to listening. But you felt that there was more to add to that, and you said you know there's a little bit more than just listening, and you went deeper into that, and that led to our conversation that we're having right now. And I thought it was it just makes so much sense. Listening is so critical. Tell me about the problem you're seeing right now. Whether it was like you know young Donald or things that you came across. What's the challenge when it comes to not listening um, that you see with sellers these days? Yeah, you know, at least I can't speak for all teams, but I can speak for my team. And, um, you know, one thing that we try to focus on here is um, when it's listening to clients, listening to the buyers, is really trying to understand their business. So a lot of this is research before we even get into the sales meeting, right? knowing who our buyer is, uh, gathering as much information as we can, uh, going through our CRM, uh, looking through our history, trying to prepare, uh, not really objection handling, but trying to map out what operational challenges we think that they could be uh, going through. When we go into the meeting, we never know what's going to be said, right? Uh, It depends who we're talking to. Uh, But what I've really been challenged with with my team is um, teaching them to just keep an open mind going into this. Don't go in with a preconceived solution. Don't go in thinking that we're going to push A and B product because it was brought up at the most recent meeting and that's what we want to focus on. What we really want to get to is just sitting down, taking a deep breath, 
and trying to listen to what they are trying to convey their problem is. And it's a lot easier said than done, right? Because you have to know your business. You have to know what problems you do solve. With us, we have a wide range of services, right? So it's even more complicated because mm. they can be interlaced. So it's really surgical in how you approach this, right? That just comes with training and that just comes with repetition on our side, but also a lot of education on where we excel and where we don't. Okay. So for sales reps that are out there right now, for many of us, we may have complex things we're selling, or even if we have not so complex things, complex things, we're going to the conversation, um, we're trying to get the outcome, a sale, and missing a so much more in between. And you're saying in order for us to be able to do that effectively, we need to come prepared a little bit more and more come prepared with understanding, but also come prepared to be able to listen for them without a preconceived notion on that off offering that's going to solve the said problem. Am I making sense there? Yeah, no, exactly. I mean, at least for us, you know, our yeah. sales cycles are long. They're yeah. complex. They involve multiple layers. Uh, oftentimes they involve government clients. So it's an additional layer of oversight that you have to take into consideration. Um, so for us, yeah, it's about listening, but not just, you know, our sales cycles could be anywhere from six months to 15 months okay. or beyond. Yeah. Um, so these are very complex discussions, right? Uh, they evolve over time and it's, you know, <clears throat> the first discussion just kind of sets us in a, in a certain trajectory, but more times than not, some other stakeholder comes into the conversation and shakes up everything that we thought we had figured out <laughs> and it's right back to square one. So it's, it's, it's like multiple pursuits all within one. So if I'm on, you're, you're in one of these conversations, what are you yeah. listening for? for or what can you teach your pretend I'm, I'm one of your reps and you're teaching me like what am I listening for in, yeah. in a conversation so I always love instead of taking the lead in these meetings I like to set up kind of an agenda right and here's what we're going to talk about and how we're going to get to the discussion topics but I love turning it back to the buyer and hearing from them can you just describe you know why this outreach started you know what is it that you're coming to us today with what is it that you're hoping to accomplish and hear from their own perspective what they think the challenge is mm. from there you know on our sales on our on our team we're gonna, it's going to trigger certain words we're going to hear certain services or certain problems uh but these could be very complex solutions that maybe they're not educated on and so what my team is going to do is start listening start listening for the most fundamental things that we know that we provide because everything is really a complimentary service on top of that or an enhancement. So for me, it's teach our team to identify what are our core services, what is the core problem here, and then from there, just starting a conversation, right? Start the drill down questions. You know, can you tell me more about how this came up? Can you tell me how much this impacts you on a daily basis? Start kind of really getting to the root cause of uh, this challenge in their end. I like the idea of the agenda to help them to be prepared. Is something you send out prior to it or on the call, you're just helping them to under navigate, understand how we're going to navigate it, the convo? It, always ahead of time, okay. right? And I always like to get that into their hands at least a couple days before the meeting. Uh, if I'm setting the meeting, set it on the invite itself, put yeah. a you know, bolded agenda just so that we can make an efficient use of time, yeah. right? You know, I, I, you, who likes setting the meeting? getting there and asking for a critical piece of information and they say, what well, can I get back to you? And yeah. then it just stalls. Yeah. What do you, yeah, okay. So you start trying to pivot, but you know, you want to keep that momentum and if they come prepared, they're investing into that conversation as well. Right. Cause yeah. they're taking time, they're getting prepared, they're getting organized and they're looking for that kind of guiding light that you're providing them. Um, so I am pro agenda. I push it all the time. <laughs> uh, it just seems to, give a little bit more flow and manage expectations on that conversation. No, I, I agree with you on that one. I, I'm, I, I love the idea of the, the agenda. And, and I, cause my feeling is, uh, Zach is that sales is not complicated. I think it's a very sales can be simple. The complexity comes obviously with, you know, there's complex deals that we sell or complex sales processes um, or cycles, but the, the selling itself 
you're identifying, you're grabbing interest, identifying a challenge, um, sharing a solution and helping them to uh, educate them enough that they make a decision that's in the, their best interest um, towards that. And that part doesn't take too, it's not too difficult if you're following um, the guy, the steps. So I, I love the agenda component. Um, the, I, I, the other thing that you mentioned is then you start to drill down um, question. How do you get that in your team's head to do that? Because you just, I mean, I, I'm thinking you just gave me a core, I heard a core problem that we can solve in the conversation. And like you're saying, and then all of a sudden, it's very tempting to say, all right, Mr. Buyer, Mrs. Buyer, I have a solution for you. Let me go with that. How, how do you help them to realize there's more to it than that? Uh, yeah, you know, I think at least within you know our organization, yeah. um, we have so many different services, so many different ways that uh, people can change in their careers within our organization. Uh, that I think it starts with who we're recruiting to be on our team, yeah. right? And uh, you know, I really like to focus on individuals that had operational experience at some point. Mm -hmm. I find they make the best salespeople. <laughs> they understand. I, I really do. I mean, you have we have some stars, but the ones that understand the complexities of what go into solving a problem, all of these drill downs come to them naturally. You know, they're curious when they were on the job at some point, how would they solve this problem if they don't have this piece of information? Um, or how does it connect to something else that they used to help an individual. Uh, typically what we'll do, if it's a high profile meeting, a uh, client that we're trying to pursue, we'll have a debrief meeting internally afterwards. Yeah. And you know, it comes up, I start drilling down on the sales call. You know, how did this happen? What is the follow up? What did they say about A, B, and C? Well, if they didn't ask a question or they don't have the information, you know, they're quickly jotting down a note. Why don't I have that? And I think it comes a little bit of a, you know, organic cycle. You know, they teach themselves, but they're also supported internally by the other team members because we do this as a team. You know, I I, I got rid of one-on-ones a long time ago on my team. Mm -hmm. We do everything as a team-based approach so that we can get shared information about people people who handle different situations. Um, it's really a community-based um, knowledge share. And it's something I really firmly believe in. Um, now, if someone wants to do a one-on-one, We'll do it, but I'm not always the person with the right answer, right? Yeah. Sales isn't <laughs> as easy for me as it is for you. Yeah. But um, we try to collectively get those that experience, that shared experience, and I think that's what leads to those uh, drill down questions becoming more organic and more kind of conversational in nature. Yeah, and I think sometimes it's intuitive, right? Where you probably have done it so much, you you know what to do, but then somebody probably could explain it a little bit different. And so I like that idea of the communal. Um, concept uh, if everybody be you know, able to 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 share um, and then also like what some of those trigger questions are if somebody could share this you know this is what I saw today in a conversation this right. is what I heard today this helped me last week I think that makes a big difference to that peer engagement um, so it, it like oftentimes though like the mature what I found and you can tell me if I'm wrong here um, or see it different I found like when sellers sometimes don't I like so go back i like the idea of the operations people because they can understand you know procedures and so forth and they know that you need to drill down not just going for happy ears they have we have, they have problem we have solution but when it comes to the maturity to ask questions that's not being said um that component uh, do you ever see ever see sellers have challenges with that where um and i tell you the story like for me i just felt like I didn't want to mess up the deal. Like this thing is going so well, <laughs> let's not screw things up. Uh, I'll just assume. Um, but there's things that I didn't hear. But they're an executive, and I want to push them too much. Am I making sense on that? Yeah. No. I. I mean, I think it's so easy to fall into this trap of placating the buyer. Yeah. Right. Just saying what they want to hear, think it's going to keep the momentum. But again, uh, are you with the stakeholder? You know, are you with the actual stakeholders that are going to be the buyer making the decision? You need to determine that early on, right? Or you're wasting the energy or you're not saying the right things or you're not developing the right solution. How do we train that? Yeah, you know, we, we don't have a formal method. You know, I think yeah. everything is, is really communal based. And as you said, there might be someone on my team that handled a certain objection or question three times last week. Yeah. And they slowly started to craft their response. And they've come up with a way to phrase it or handle it that is, you know, to me, genius. 
And I want to take that, I don't want to copy them, but I want to understand their train of thought so that we can kind of inject that into our conversations. Um, I think that really just comes up in how we approach the sales team, how we do the breakdowns. You know, every Monday morning we have a breakdown of meetings coming up this week and every single Friday. It's not a, it's a standing meeting. We have the ability to do a breakdown as well at the end of the week to go over anything uh, that really kind of held them up during the week. Um, besides that, they're off to the running throughout the week and just kind of trying to engage and um, do as much as they can within those limited days. Yeah. Um, I, I feel like there's a, um, the being able to have that confidence, and I think it goes back to the type of people that you hire as well that helps with that. Um, if I if I understand from an operations standpoint, uh, and th so there's a I was calling into a bank. It was a VP of the bank that I was reaching out to, and I was brand new um, in the software that I was selling, and I in and I didn't have the confidence to speak to him because I didn't know the solution um, as well. However, he saw me as somebody that um, you know that knew he perceived me as from the, coming from this company and from the industry that I knew more about his problem than he particular did may have done may may have known at that point but the way that I went about it though I was very submissive to him um and that I think that was one of the big reasons that a deal didn't progress and didn't go further because I didn't demonstrate that confidence so go back to somebody with that operation experience or that confidence they will they're not trying to sell anything they're literally just trying to make sure that we are you know, that we have the things that we need in order to be able to best help you. And because they have confidence knowing that if I get this information, I can decide, help you to decide if we can help you or not. They tend to be more um, convincing, so to speak, because they understand that situation, understand that problem rather than just being subservient. Am I making sense there? It, yeah. I mean, you know, at some point you went from letting them kind of guide that conversation yeah. to you deciding, Hey, I do know what I'm talking about, mm -hmm. right? So what was that moment for you that, you know, yeah. you went from, you know, going into it confident, but then they kind of started to lead the conversation. What was that break to you for you? Was it that meeting or what was the change? That's a very good question. Um, for me, that came when I, I think it was, it was repetition, but that yeah. was the aha. Maybe this, had ha there's other situation like this as well. But for that day, it was like, that was like the, I came from a caveman to like, a, you know, homo sapien. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> ah, like I can, <laughs> I'm real now. <laughs> like, uh, but I, I felt like, um, or like Pin Pinocchio mode, right? I uh, came a real boy. But I, I felt that's when it made it, it happen. But I was going through training and I think I built up confidence. You know, actually what it was that, I, I think part of it was hearing the client's testimonials about how we have solved problems for them. And even though I didn't use the software because, I mean, I was an individual, not a corporation, even though I didn't use the software like they did, their story helped me to be able to gain my confidence. And then when I had conversations with folks like this guy, I had this aha. I was like, hold on. I just messed up on that deal. But I was aware of why I messed up. And then that allowed me to move forward. Um, so the client testimonials, being aware of this, became a real boy now, <laughs> and and it helped me to progress forward. So I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah. No, no, it does. I mean, it, it sounds like you have perhaps a, a strong referral basis. Um, you know, the strong testimonials. Yeah. Uh, we we know that's that's how we live and, and you die is by referrals. Yeah. Um, and testimonials. So, um, we yeah, I it's great. It's confidence yeah. builders. Um. Uh, I completely understand there. So uh, here you are. We're, we're coming to wrap up here. Um, we yeah. got to listen for things that we that are not being said. We have to be, you know, we have to have a sense, a level of confidence to be able to listen for stuff like that. We have to participate, you know, gain insight from our team because you can learn from the community. And we got to be prepared for those conversations, those dialogues. Um, if there's a leader listening to this and she's trying to think about ways to help her team or an individual listening to this and he's like, you know what, man, I need to be a better listener um, so I can get things that are not being said. Um, what's any last word of advice or one piece of advice you'd leave them with? Uh, great question. Um, you know, I wish I had a playbook I could give you and <laughs> the best advice. And, you know, you were on my podcast and I was this, but no. Um, I think if you find yourself in a situation where maybe you're stumbling and maybe you feel like you're in the moment and you can't get out of, you see it all happening in front of you, 
I always tell my team, take a very partnership-based approach. Think about it. You are evaluating, engaging for us, very long sales cycles, but we're looking for a partnership with our clients. Yes, we want to sell them, but we want to sell into a partnership that makes sense. So it's a relationship that you're building with this, uh, either company or individual. Uh, so ask them all the questions, all the things that you'd want to know before you formalize this partnership. You know, make sure it's a match. Maybe that will instinctively kind of lead to these questions and it'll start to get you thinking from a different perspective that, you know, it's not from your playbook, your technical sales book that um, you're following. That's really the advice I have with my team. You know, yeah. don't try to force it. Try to make these conversations as organic as possible and try to get to the root of what is the problem we're trying to solve for this client or this organization. That'd be mine. Get back to the basics. I love it. Get back to the basics, man. If folks listening to this want to get in touch with you to learn a little bit more about you, what's the best way for them to do so? Yeah, just reach out uh, by email. Um, we can share the email here with you. Uh, I don't know if you want to post it in the credit, but it's zbradshaw at brightkey.net, or we can reach out on LinkedIn. Happy to talk anytime. Awesome, man. We'll put a link down in the show notes so they can get back to you to your LinkedIn profile. And if they're interested in checking out your services and what you guys do, uh, another golden cherry on top or something. So thank yeah, you. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you for the time. Great talking. Appreciate you. Hey, that was Zachary Bradshaw. If you haven't done so already, go ahead and connect with him. You can find him on LinkedIn. You can check out some of the cool things he's doing at Brightkey and uh, some of the cool experiences that he's having helping his team to be able to focus more on listening for what the prospects are not saying. If you need help to improve your listening skills, you can go ahead and check out our sales foundation program where we teach you everything you need to know throughout the sales process, especially if you're a full cycle seller. Or you can check out our BDR prospecting program or finally, our sales mastermind, where you get a chance to be able to work with other sales professionals, learn from peers what they're doing to improve and to hit their sales quota. It's an amazing group. I would love to have you join us. We have three different programs. You can find more information about the cohorts in the show notes, or you can go to the salesevangelist.com slash mastermind, or go to the salesevangelist.com and check out our training programs. As always, I want you to thrive. I want you to succeed. I want you to raise your level of thinking. I want you to go out and do big things. See you on the next one.